Welcome to this month's episode of Book Chat. This episode is coming with a warning because we are going to be talking about Outlander and we're going to be talking about Outlander's books 1, 2, 3, and 4, as well as the TV series seasons 1 through 4. So if you are not up to date on the TV show, you may hear a couple spoilers. If you do not want to hear any spoilers, I suggest you press stop right now and skip this episode until you are up to date. If you do decide to listen, you may hear a couple things. We don't go into great detail on the television show, but we do drop a few things that happened throughout all four seasons. So just wanted to warn you, you may hear something that you didn't want to hear if you are not up to date on the TV show. And with that, let's get right into it. You're listening to the Wellness Simplified Podcast, simple wellness tips to help you improve your life without turning it upside down with your host, award-winning fitness instructor, nutrition coach, and wellness expert, Susie Fevens. Welcome back to the podcast. This is our second episode of Book Chat, and I am really excited today to be talking to Michelle Collins from thiswholelife.ca. You can find her on Facebook and Instagram at this whole life zero one and we are going to be talking about books and more specifically after we get through the books that she's read recently we're going to be talking outlander and i think that's going to be a rabbit hole so welcome yes. michelle thank you i'm so excited to be chatting with you yeah i'm really excited you know the very first episode was really well received. I had a lot of people who had not listened to the podcast before, but as soon as they heard books, they got right into it. So I was excited. Yep. I've been wanting to do like this book feature for a while, but you know, I kind of had to establish something else first, unless I wanted to talk <laughs> books all the time. And I do read a lot, yeah. but I don't read enough to talk about them every single week. So, Well, I think that's the, the joy of books, not only losing yourself in them, but then having... Um, opportunity to discuss what you've learned with other people and yes. you know maybe find um, you know find some books that you might not have picked up before or or just I, I still with all the technology and everything I still need to have my hard hardcore books mm -hmm. you know that that I hold and flip and and have the pages marked and underlined and everything so I'm really excited to be chatting with you about you know some of the books that we're doing lately yeah I I do like hard, well, not just hardcover, but I do like hard copy yeah, no, books. Yeah. I do then, read a lot of ebooks, but sometimes yep. even I have some that I have in both formats. <laughs> yeah. Because yep. there is, when you, especially if you want to reference something, it's so much easier to reference something in an actual hard copy, I find, than in an ebook. Yeah. I have a bookcase full of books that have sticky notes sticking out of them all over the place and highlighted and underlined. And yeah, th those are the things when I, when I might need a little refresher on something, I can yeah. just grab the book and not have to go through the whole thing, just hit the high points. So. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And another reason I was excited about starting this part of the podcast is because I can't join a book club because I teach every single evening. And right. so like, there's no book club that wants me because I'm never going to show up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and exactly. this way, like I told everybody at the end of last month's episode that we were going to be talking about Outlander. So I told them, like, if you want to read the first book or you want to just watch the TV series, because we can talk about both of those, exactly. then they had a whole month to do that. And even if they want to wait exactly. another three months and come back to this episode, they can. So it's kind of a fun way to do sort of a book club without it ever really being a book club. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's no point in, in having the technology if we can't use it to our advantage, right? That's right. The, the best of both. <laughs> so I've I'll kind of talked about the fact that we're going to be talking about Outlander. But before we do that, yeah. <laughs> we are going to backtrack a little bit because we are both Outlander fans. And I know that once we start, we're not going to stop. Yeah. So no. I would love, first of all, for you to tell us a little bit about yourself as well as what your reading life looks like at the moment. Um, myself, I'm an almost 55 year old um, that has been a wife and mother. Um, I married my high school sweetheart, so we've been together for 37 years, and it'll be 32 years this year that we've been married. Um, so my babies are all grown up. They're still my babies. They're scattered a little bit around. My daughter lives in Newfoundland. Uh, my oldest son lives uh, just outside Fredericton. Now, we and should say that you're in New Brunswick, too. Yes, I am in New Brunswick. Yes, from Newfoundland originally. Um, so, uh, but I've lived in Moncton longer than I've lived anywhere. 
Um, but anybody who is a Newfoundlander understands that home is always Newfoundland, no matter how long you've been away from it. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's always the core. Um, I started writing my blog uh, a couple of years ago, um, started writing originally for a friend of mine on her blog because we had many conversations and she said, you have to write this down, you have to share this with people. So I started, I did about six months on her blog and then went to the first blog jam I went to and then made the announcement to everyone that I would post my own blog by the end of the next month so <laughs> <laughs> nothing like a tight deadline <laughs> yeah since I announced it to everybody um, so it's been a, a real interesting learning curve um, a lot of uh, again technology that comes really easily to some people but not so much to me so um, but writing has always been in and reading words have always been my uh, my sanctuary my joy my release and my you know rescue so um the word part of it the writing part of it is is comes really easily it's the the other stuff that I'm still learning about so. yeah it can be a headache I I like to say that I'm a blogging grandma because my blog is over <laughs> 10 years old so I have been yeah doing exactly. it for a while and actually even before I had the one that I have now Back in the 90s, I had a Backstreet Boys fan website with one of my friends. And oh. that was back in the day when you had to write everything in strict HTML, yeah. like all the gobbledygook. There yeah. was no yeah. lovely that's, WordPress. That's just all blah, blah, blah to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm so when all that stuff is, is done for me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I love, um, love learning, love continuing um, to, to try new things. So it's uh it's just another step in the learning curve so yeah and there's always something new to learn when it comes to blogging so yeah exactly (laughs) and what about reading are you someone who reads daily just once in a while like what oh no i'm i'm a i'm a voracious reader oh uh yeah no i i read um i read i've got like two books maybe two and a half books on the go right now. <laughs> I've got one that I'm reading on my phone in the Kindle app. Um, and I've got a couple of hardcover ones um, that I've that I've been working through. Um, mostly, again, because Diana Gabaldon spoiled me for any other fiction writer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I Most of the books I read are would would probably fall into the self help sure. learning, um, you know, mode. Um, I love reading the the information is not new or different in in most of the things. I mean, mm-hmm. they're you know the, the basic premise of most of those things are um, are the same. But I find that as, as I've been in different stages of my life, I get something different out of the way it's presented in the different um, in the different books. Um, everybody kind of has the same information but spins it in a different way. So there's been some things that I've read you know that i read years ago that i'm like oh okay and then when i reread it now i'm like okay now this is what it means for me so yeah um, i love those books that each time you read them you take yeah. something different away from them i think those yeah. are so valuable because it speaks to what stage exactly. of life you're in exactly and that's again like i say i mean you know the things that i've i've been through over the last well goodness even the last five years i did my first bodybuilding competition right. when i 50 um and so there was a lot of um a lot of reading about nutrition and exercise and stuff at that point um and then I was in business for a while so there was that and then I was out of that and uh you know there, then there was a lot of reading about recovering from that kind of episode. <laughs> so, um yeah it's I think um the, the glory is to be open to the experience and open to the learning because um, like I say, you can, I've, I've read many books several times and just go, okay, now, now that makes sense to me. So, yeah, I, I find that especially true, um, with yoga books. Like when I have to read the yoga sutras and all those <laughs> super in-depth, uh, <laughs> yoga yeah. historical things behind the thing. Yeah, yeah. You take 
something different or you grasp something different from it every time you look at it or read it. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting. And I also find because obviously I read a lot of businessy stuff and a lot of health and wellness stuff too. There's so many parallels between business and fitness that I'm forever drawing from one into the other, like something I learned in a wellness book to business and business into wellness. I find they just go together so well. Well, I think, you know, like I said, the, the basic premise, you know, setting goals, how do you get to them? Yes. No matter, you know, if it's weight loss, if it's building muscle, if it's building your business or whatever, the basic steps are the same. Yeah. You know, you, you know, the set the goals and follow through and the accountability and the support network and, you know, all those things. So that's why I, I really um, love like you say, when, when you can see the parallels in, in what you're living, um, the subtle art of not giving up yes. was, was one of those books for me that um, I read that just as our, um, our, as we were deciding to let go of the business that we had, mm-hmm. um, factor three in that book was life changing for me. So I did uh, read it, but I don't, I remember it was a yeah. good one. I don't remember the specifics yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like I said, chapter three really stuck out because it really spoke to what I was, what my husband and I were going through um, at the time and the people we were dealing with and things. So um, it was like, yeah, there's the universe going, OK, you know, this this is some here's some lessons you can take that and, and you know, bury yourself or you can take it and move on. So right. we, we, you know, we move on. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes that's, that's the hardest decision. Well, it was like, and, and, you know, actually making the decision to let the business go was um, once it was done, there was such a weight lifted off of both of us because we both were, were trying so hard to make it work and it just wasn't going anywhere. And um, then I wrote uh, one of actually one of the blog um, posts that I did uh, called turning the tables um, was was right around that time as well and it was like basically I was trying to move a table from one room to the next and the table wouldn't fit mm. and no matter what I was trying to do I couldn't make the table get through the door until I took the whole table apart um, so yeah so y'all go read it and get the rest of the story on that one turning yeah. the table good one <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put it in the show notes so they'll be able to <laughs> So as a voracious reader, have there been any books that you've read lately that you really loved or that you really disliked? Um, I, I don't generally read books I dislike. Um, I, I love books. The, the only books I can say, and it's been years, um, are the Da Vinci Code books, mm-hmm. Dan Brown books. Yeah. I cannot. I just can't. <laughs> I just cannot. Um, I read those after... Uh, after reading Outlander, um, and just his style of writing, and, and I mean, I love, the, I love the premise of the story. Um, just the way he constructed it, just was not my thing. And my husband loved it; like he just, it was one of his favorite books to read. So I'll be honest, um, but, I have not read it or even picked them up. I watched the movie, yeah. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, that was yeah, interesting, no, and, I, and that was good enough. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed the movie more than the book. Um, but yeah, just his style of writing. I, I like to be able to um, sink into a book and really um, absorb it. And, you know, like when I pick up a book, Ray's like, oh, OK, there she, you know, she's gone for whatever amount of time. So right. um, and, and that just didn't do that for me. It was just the chapters were really short and they were really just didn't flow well for me. Yeah. Uh, what I'm reading now that I'm really enjoying and it's been really challenging but enjoyable of challenging is called um, The Joy Diet by Martha Beck. And it's um, the copyright on it is 2003. So it's been around for a while. I've had it in my uh, bookcase of self uh for many years. And uh, again, started to try to read it from years ago and just wasn't, wasn't right. right the time. Right. Yeah, so so I started uh, six weeks ago. Each chapter has a different theme, and and it's made to build on the chapter before. Ooh, I like so, that. Yeah, and and she calls them the ten ingredients for joy. So I've actually been using them for uh, each theme for a Monday mindset post on uh, on my Facebook post. 
and uh, just the the theme name and the little write up uh, about it. And um, the last two have been really challenging. It, it started off with nothing, you know, the art of doing nothing, mm-hmm. uh, desire, creativity, and then from creativity went risk and then treats. Um, treats was really a challenging one because it um, gave us, you know, the, the, the exercise was to write down a list of things that made you smile, that make you smile as yes. treats and to do, to do more of that. Mm-hmm. Um, to treat Basically to treat yourself after taking, doing the hard risky thing. Right. right. Um, and so that was a really challenging one. And that was last week's blog post on Friday um, about, how I realized that it, you know, to, to really identify things that make me smile mm. and things that make me happy because I am by nature a caretaker. And so I do lots of things to make other people happy and to ensure their happiness. Um, but I don't always focus on the things that bring me joy and make me smile. So that was, uh, that was a really interesting week. So this week uh, is play. Um, so I haven't read that chapter yet, but I think that'll be kind of an interesting uh, follow up from the treats one. Yeah, that's a really interesting concept. It, and it's also interesting because before our call this morning, and I'll say that this is going to be published a few weeks later than when we're recording. Right. Um, I have a free Facebook group. It's a mindful living Facebook group. Mm-hmm. And I do a monthly challenge each month. And this month, I am basing it off of a book that I've recently just read called The Five Minute Recharge. So it had okay. different challenges or different tasks that they wanted you to do. And so I'm using some mm-hmm. of those tasks as a basis for my challenge this month. And one of them was to figure out how you're going to celebrate small wins and it's not the same but it's sort of the same idea like when something big happens we often will celebrate we'll go out or buy ourselves something but those small wins we often don't we're just like oh that's nice and then continue with our day instead of creating some sort of ritual around it and one of their suggestions or I shouldn't say suggestions. One of their comparisons was like a football player when they get a touchdown and they do their little touchdown dance. That is like their little celebration. So one of the challenges was to create or come up with something that you were going to do to help celebrate small wins, whether it was just like a fist pump or saying something out loud or something like that, because it signals to your brain that, that something <laughs> yeah something good happened and i guess yeah. your brain our brains like to over exaggerate so it takes a small win and suddenly no. you celebrate it and it thinks it was bigger than it was and then it wants you to do it again so it helps cultivate yeah. that positive mindset and it just yeah. reminded me of that when you were saying things that make you smile i was like oh yeah that kind of goes hand in hand a little bit yeah and it was it was funny because my husband came home from work friday afternoon and he went out on the patio because it was a gorgeous day finally and I went out and I gave him a kiss and I said, you're one of the things that makes me smile. Aww. And he said, oh, good. He said, because I read your blog. <laughs> <laughs> he was living in fear all day. <laughs> and he usually comments on it or shares it or something, but he didn't do any of that. And I thought, OK, he's he's getting a little worried now. <laughs> it's just um, it's, it's, it was just a really interesting exercise to identify you know, the, the things that make me smile, the things yeah. that I smile at just, just generally. So yeah, I'm really, really loving working through this book. It's not a long book, mm-hmm. but because of the way it's, it's broken up, it's, it's like taken me six weeks so far because you just, each activity builds on the one before. So. Yeah. And you want to give enough time in between each to really, yeah. 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 Cause otherwise I just read all of, all the way through and not do any of the exercises. Exactly. And- out of that well obviously <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna have to put that on my uh my reads list that never stops yeah. growing but <laughs> yeah well that's the thing and and i've i've weeded down a lot of my books um there's a really great used bookstore that we have here um in riverview um, just across the, the river from moncton here and um they trade in you can trade in books and mm-hmm. get trade credit and then buy other books so um but there's there's like i said there's i've got a bookcase here in the office that books that will not ever go because i just go back to them so many times and need to have that 
Um, I just need to have my friends close. <laughs> yeah, I have that as well. And I also have a separate place where I have all of my unread books. And I made myself a deal at the beginning of the year that I wasn't allowed to buy any more books until it's in one of those like cubicle storage units. Mm -hmm. So it's three yeah. squares across and then of course books are piled on top of books and I said I couldn't yeah. buy any books until I was down to just one square and it is now June and <laughs> I've read maybe yeah. four of them because I just keep getting more books from the library like yeah. they, I don't even need to tell them my name at the library I'm there so often <laughs> they just get my book off the shelf oh so, yeah so um, my project hasn't been going all that well <laughs> No, and, and again, going back to the, you know, when, when it's the right time, you read the right book. Mm. Um, I, because I, I'll do that too. I'll, you know, go through thrift stores and used bookstores and stuff like that. And I'll just, not looking for anything in particular, but just seeing what's there. And, um, you know, if something speaks to me, then I'll take it because yeah. it might not be you know, it might not be at that time, but you know, that's what happened with the joy diet. I, I bought that, you said years ago and, and it's just now the right time for me to, to, to do it. Yeah. I think that there is a lot of the universe telling us things when it comes to books. Yeah. I oh, have, yeah. if I hear this same book mentioned and it's not like on the top seller list or something. If it's a book right. from a few years ago and it comes up two or three times in a matter of days, I'm just like, all right, yeah. I get I get the picture. I need to read the book. Yeah. I understand. You can yeah. stop throwing it at me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what happened uh, with Outlander for me. My sister-in-law um, gave me the first two books um, in the early 90s because mm -hmm. the first book came out in 88. So, um, yeah, and it takes her forever to write a book. So I know the first two were together. So it was like early 90s. And I devoured them <laughs> and just um, adored them and then had to wait for the third one to come out. And then every, ever since then, it's like, okay, I read it. And then I have to wait, you know, years for the next one to come out. So Yeah, so I'm a later adopter. I read the first one. Oh, I can't tell you when, but it was like, I'm going to say 2009, 10-ish. Right. So there was a yeah. good pile by the time I got there. Yeah. But still, yeah, I have to always go back to the previous one to see what the heck was going on when we last saw them because yeah. I, it's so long in between you can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing, one of the many things that I love about her books um, is that she researches them so well yes. that the facts are facts in the yeah. books. Historical facts are facts. The medical facts are facts. Um, but then she creates the voice of the main characters, you know, Claire's voice. I saw, I actually saw Diana Gabaldon in, in uh, person here at the Capitol Theater at the Fry Festival a few years ago. And she speaks, when she speaks, it's Claire's voice. Like, you can, I, I could just imagine Claire speaking that way. She's very, very sure of herself, very like, this is what I've done. This is what I, you know, this is, this is how I've created these books. And, um, yeah, it's it's just been a, a glorious ride. And then and that's one of the books definitely when I when I just had the first two and waiting for the third one, like I just kept going back rereading the first two and Ray was like, Okay, you're gone again. Yep, yeah, yeah, I'll be <laughs> in a week and I'll and I'll be able to talk to you again. But um yeah, just everything about and the fact that you can't pin it down to a category, you know, when she talks that uh, when when they first came out, the, of course, the bookstores were like, oh, it's historical romance, oh, it's friction, oh, it's time travel, oh, it's, um, and it's, yes, but no, it's all of those things and none of those things. And she um, does such a good job with it. I remember when my friend who recommended it described it to me, she was like, well, and then she goes back in time 200 and some years, she's like, but it's not <laughs> overdone. And I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like I'm yeah. all in for weird things. I read a lot of sci-fi and fantasy, so that didn't phase me. But when she was yeah. like, "It's not overdone," I thought, "How this? What? How can it not be overdone? How yeah. can you just put time travel in like it's going to the yeah. corner store or something?" But yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and the the wonderful 
um, idea of because because again, like like you, I'm all about you know spiritual things mm-hmm. and you know fate and universe and all of those things and you know okay so somebody is called a witch or or a wizard because they have knowledge of things that nobody else does listen so i what... would have been burned as a witch That's my it, right? doctor actually i have fibromyalgia and for years but... they were always trying to figure out what was wrong with me and one day my doctor who was a bit of a jokester he was just like you know you've got black hair you're very pale yeah. Are you sure you might not be a witch? And I was like, this is your diagnosis. But I'm yeah, pretty exactly. sure that I would have been burned at the stake. I yeah. could only hope that I would have had a Jamie to come rescue me just ahead of right. the execution. Oh, please. Yes. Let's have that. <laughs> um, and, and that's what I, uh, you know, I loved the fact that, again, the, the, you know, it's definitely a love story, but it's a story of equals. It's a story of, um, you know, she doesn't, yeah, in that instance, she, um, you know, he came along and saved her, but she was fighting her way all the way to, you know, to the pinnacle of that yes, moment. Yeah. She wasn't like, oh, I will wait until, you know, my hero comes to save me. Yes. She had, you know, like, um, and, and she's feisty and, and, you know, they, they get along and then they don't. And, um, but they still under it all, I, you know, one of the lines that always stuck with me, um, was, um, you know, there's, there's, there can be, um, things that you might not be able to tell me, but the things that you t- do tell me, please let them be the truth. Yeah. And um, that to me was, you know, like extremely respectful of, you know, there's, you're not just going to spill out your whole journey and everything about it just because we're, you know, together now or whatever. Um, But when you do tell me something, make sure it's the truth. And then when you do that, then I can trust the things that you can't tell me yet. Um, You possibly will in time or, you know, that you're dealing with them on your own or, you know, that you got it covered. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I do think that a big part of it is that they are equals, especially in a time when that was not the norm. No, no, no. Every and and again, that causes a lot of the conflict because he's he expects her to be the you know subservient woman and do as you're told and you know and and she's not. And then he he learns to respect that. But the the funny thing about that is. Yes, in a lot of cases, if she had done what she was told, they wouldn't have gotten into <laughs> she wouldn't have gotten into trouble. So, this is true. <laughs> you know, like so it, to me again, it's another lesson about yes, you're an independent woman, and yes, you can take care of yourself. Or, I should just say independent person, not even mm-hmm. woman. Because, sure. You know, there's lots of times when somebody would could say to you like. I've had this experience that you haven't had. So if we do it this way instead of your way, chances are it'll turn out better. And right. then you're like, nope, this is the way I'm going to do it. I'm like, okay, well, you know, you know, I understand these people and you don't, but, you know, we're, we're, we'll learn the lesson that way. So um, to me, it's, it's the interdependence that um, rather than independence um, always that works for them. Yeah, and they are very both headstrong individuals. Yeah. So it's amazing that they get along as well as they do, really. So I have to ask, when you heard yeah. that they were going to make a TV series, were you concerned? I was concerned. Um, well, again, since I'm, um, you know, old old school Outlander, um, when I had the... Um, oh, my God. Um, when I had the... Uh, at the book signing that I, that I went to see her at, mm-hmm. um, I came with the first outlander. She was like, Oh, you've been with us for a while. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first one. So I've been hearing rumblings of, you know, we want to make it into a movie. We want to make it into a mini series. And I was very afraid of all of those things. Yeah. Um, because there's so much information and the story is so, uh, captivating and when you're an Outlander fan you're hardcore so like you know the things yeah um, I was relieved by her um, by Diana's participation in it yes 
and um, that she, even though she wasn't like she was creatively involved in it, not necessarily writing all you know the yeah, but the they things. would throw things at her to see what she yeah. thought and yeah, yeah. So the night because uh, because the first year it was on, um, I didn't have the channel on cable that it was mm -hmm. on. So I went, you know, online and downloaded it, whatever the next, you know, the day after the right. show. And so I was very nervous. And then I saw the first show and the dialogue in the, to me, the two most pivotal moments in that show, the one at the cabin and yeah. then the one when they went back, when they got back to the castle, the dialogue was exactly the dialogue from the book. And because they were so true to those moments, I could overlook, because obviously they're not going to be able to fit everything, you know, even right. over the course of the season, they, they're not going to be able to fit all the, and everybody's got their favorite Outlander scenes and parts and things. Um, but I felt much better after, after that first episode, because those were the, um, the moments that like, you know, when you know the book and you've read it, thousands of times <laughs> ingrained in your head and um at the i'm trying to remember I, i'm talking about it without doing spoilers because it's such a wonderful i think so that we can say what we wish um oh. i will put a disclaimer at the beginning that if you don't okay. wish to know so <laughs> then the it's other... your own problem <laughs> yeah that's right like get over it um the other really really huge moment for me was when um he sent when jamie sent her back through yes. the stones yeah um because again i had seen that moment in my head like i'm a very visual person when i'm mm -hmm. reading so Same. i create the scenes in my head um i had seen that scene in my head so many times and i could cry right now thinking about it oh it was uh, gut-wrenching Oh yeah, right. And and uh, to me, it was just beautifully done. And so, and and also the scene with uh, at, at Wentworth with mm -hmm. with and and Jack Randall. Yes. Um, again, was with that whole season. I was like, oh my god, this is going to be because again, it's such a it's such a powerful, powerful um, moment. It was a life changing moment, obviously for Jamie and. Um, you know, she showed her strength in not giving up and she was going to save him this time. Yeah. And um, yeah, that was, that was again, very gut wrenching. And like, I've been able to rewatch a lot of the, the scenes, a lot of the series. Mm -hmm. uh, can't rewatch that one. Yeah. Was, I dreaded that was, episode yeah. for yeah. weeks. It was wonderfully done. If, if you could say that about that type of a scene. Correct. Uh, <laughs> Right. But it was it was it really and I remember when it came out and there was much dialogue on social media about how it was done, um, compared especially compared to I think there was a Game of Thrones episode that had a rape scene as well that mm -hmm. um that played around the same time and uh, just how this one was done and how just psychologically it impacted everything and then yeah, it it I was really really happy about that. Yeah, uh, I now I would have watched both um the Game of Thrones as well as this one, but it was done in a way yeah. that was much more it was still gut-wrenching, but it didn't like yeah. destroy you to the same way as the Game of Thrones one it was very violent yeah. and very hard. Yeah. This one was yeah. still very hard, but it was hard in a different way. Yeah, because you know, and again understanding jack randall's character and you know his his um you know his his mm -hmm. desires and his his nature um made it very um you know realistic and and again in the book they don't they don't talk about or have this scene in the in the series but um when he Jamie talks to Claire about it afterwards and he says, you know, he made me rise to him and he made me, you know, yes. we, we complete the sex act and, you know, and all of these things. And she was like, same thing. She didn't want to hear it all, but she knew that he had to get it out, get that poison out as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, just the, he's a strong man who's used to taking care of everything, but because he gave his word that he wouldn't fight um, to save Claire, 
you know, his honor, and then he had nothing left. And, and, and again, in the book, he talks about, you know, having a safe space in inside that little, that cottage, that house that you have inside of yourself, where, mm -hmm. where you can always go and be safe and how that was destroyed. So, um, yeah, I, I found it very, yeah, and, and I can't even find the word either. Yeah, it's, there's, it's, I don't think there is the proper word for it. Respectful and very, you know, respectful of, of those others who have had that experience. Yeah. Uh, I think it gave a voice and it gave um, the opportunity maybe of others that have had that experience that maybe um, have not been able to put it into words themselves. Yeah. And I am glad that the show decided to skip over some of that because I think it would have been too much all yeah, at well, once. It wasn't, it wasn't gratuitous. No. And it wasn't. You know, it wasn't like, okay, we have to see every moment. Right. Um, because you obviously knew what was going on and exactly. what was happening. Exactly. Um, so that in that way it honored um it honored the experience and the the challenge of recovering from that. So. Yeah. I can't remember which book that actually happened in. That is Is that the, the first one? End, no. That's the end of the first one. Oh, is yeah. it? Oh, it's yeah. been so long. And I think yeah. that was another thing that benefited me is it had been quite a while since I read the first book when the show came out. And while a lot of the scenes were emblazoned in my brain, they weren't scene by scene. So I could yeah. allow them a few more liberties than probably you could because yeah. I didn't have it quite. Yeah. And, and even with that, like I, you know, I'm a, I'm a storyteller myself. So I understand that every time you tell a story, and whoever tells the story is going to tell it a little differently. Right. So, um, like I said, I, I went into it being open to their interpretation of it. Yeah. Um, and, and like I said, once once the pivotal moments were were accurate, those dialogue moments, because um, uh, like every Outlander fan can recite, you know, you need not be scared. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, so, so that was there and how... Um, how they filled in the rest of it was was good and actually in the third season um because the third book was the most challenging one for me to get through yeah it was not, i remember you saying that. I all found that the least like okay i'm going to read it i i enjoyed it and and loved her and the thing is you can't skip over stuff because you never know when something's going to show up again right, right? yeah you know how books in the in the future or whatever so um but it was the most challenging one for me to get through but and that I'm was still... voyager correct yeah, yeah that was Voyager. for those listening and, yeah yeah and so season three of the series is based on voyager and um i i liked it in the series i got through it in the series much easier than i got through it in the book um because those moments were um like it was more condensed so it wasn't like okay we're all over the place with where this story is going so right and my hardest book was the drums of autumn i found that one oh. i found that a real slog for me <laughs> uh, yeah because when you open the first page of drums of autumn it's she's knocking on the door of the the wakefield man. right 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 and you're like what the hell like what just happened <laughs> I remember was, I was stuck in it, like, in the middle one. for ages. Yeah, yeah. Well, at the end of book one, they were at the, in the, in the down, down, way down in the bowels of the abbey in the hot water. Right. Um, baths, right. And they're walking back up the stairs and she's going to tell them that she's pregnant. And then the start of book two, she's, you know, back in modern time, knocking on the door of, of the reverend's, um, you know, house in scotland and you're like what no, no. yeah yeah so it's like what happened so for me that just spurred me to read through faster because i'm like okay well what happened and where where did we get to that so yeah and i i will say the same thing that you found with season three versus book three i found season four versus book four easier to get through and my husband's been watching with me and of course, yeah. he doesn't know anything about the series other than what he's already watched. Yeah. And the very first scene that Stephen Bonnet showed up in, right? he was like, I don't like this guy. And then Jamie yeah. let him go free. And he was like, he shouldn't have done that. He's going to be a problem. And I was like, oh, son, if you only knew. <laughs> if you only know. Yeah. Yeah. 
and he yeah. just the whole season he just kept saying i'm not gonna be happy until this guy's dead and i was like he's yeah. like please just yeah. tell me he dies and i was like he is gonna die but you're gonna have to wait quite a while yeah. And as as far as the characters, um, you know, the casting of the characters, mm-hmm. um, very happy with Jamie and Claire's casting. Rihanna and Roger, I just I, I wanted her to be more feisty and she she needed to be taller. And I know those are like picky details, but um, she she was Jamie's daughter. And there was some scenes in um, season two, like the way they reveal to her who her real father was in the series as opposed to the book mm-hmm. uh, I thought was really good and really she really got to show her her fire knee feistiness in that in that part but for most of it I find her just kind of like meh <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, I would agree with that I would agree with that I do like tv I, roger I, yeah he uh, he just he needs to have more feistiness too like yeah more... he's a little yeah He's, he's a little, little wishy-washy. Yeah, he's a little wishy-washy. He's a little bit of a sad yeah. panda. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, he did have he did have those moments in the book, but he was he, it, because he was strong in other ways. The moments felt more real in the book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was like, you know, I'm a really strong guy, and now I'm just falling head over heels over this girl that I've known for you know half an hour or whatever. Right. Uh, and to me, that made it more um believable and more tender because he was starting to break down his his strength uh, and his his guard of you know being alone being an orphan and and giving himself permission to to have feelings for somebody else so yeah and i just keep thinking forward i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do any spoilers past book four season four but roger he's got some stuff coming up (laughs) And I don't know if TV Roger's ready for it. No, well, that's the thing. Like even even in the season four and the, in the Indian Village, mm-hmm. um, like he did have he he has glimpses of the Roger I want him to be. Yeah. Uh, but because again, because he was so strong in the book, when he expresses his doubts about uh, being able to raise a child that may not be his own. To me, that rang more true in the book than, you know, in the in the series, it was just like one more wishy-washy thing. It's like, oh, for God's sake, man up, Roger. Like, you know, if you love the woman, then you love the child no matter what, you know. Yeah, um, and I couldn't remember when he actually had come back in the book and in yeah. the TV series when Jamie and Claire come back by themselves. I was just like, what the hell is going on here? Just get that friggin' yeah. Roger back here already. I know he's coming back. So. Yeah. Yeah. And and the same thing, like in the book, um, Brianna had the baby after Claire came back. Right. I did and, remember that. Yeah. And in the in the series, um, she had it while they were still away. So um, that again, that gave me a little glimpse of of strong Brianna mm-hmm. of, you know, like I can do this with the people that are here and, you know, I'm going to I'm going to take care of this. But um yeah for for the most part i just i would just wanted them to be a little bit more than what they are hopefully in the coming season we'll see more yeah. of that now that they have sort of yeah, solidified sure. as characters that are going to be there for the yeah. foreseeable future i will say my biggest concern when i saw the casting was they were always talking about claire and like her ample rear <laughs> and then yes. katrina belf yeah. is such a waif and i was like i don't yeah. know how they're gonna play this off but i mean obviously she's wonderful and she's done a wonderful yeah. job but that was my only yeah. visually speaking irritation yeah. yeah and thank god for the costuming because you know you could have a rear that you know you would never <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, flumps and flops and all the rest of the costuming. So, um, yeah. And and strangely enough, one of the things that irked me was that Jamie's not left-handed in the series. Oh, you know, I never even thought of that. Yeah, see, that's because, again, in, in the Wentworth scenes, um, Jack Randall um, used the hammer and nail on right. his right hand because he figured he was right-handed and that would be his strongest hand. Yeah. And, and Jamie was left-handed and, um, 
you know. So they did, uh, you know, in the series, they did, he did hammer his left hand rather than the right hand. But, you know, it's it, funny. It, I didn't notice that because I am a lefty. So I usually yeah. keep track of that sort of thing. Yeah. But that was just, it was just one of those moments. Where I was like, yeah, okay. Um, but again, I think the reason, and again, I don't know the reason why Diana would have written it that way, but um, to me, because of the left-handedness being a sign of being different, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, for so many years and so many centuries, like if you were left-handed, you were, and he even says in the book, he was forced to write, you know, with his right hand and learn how to use his right hand because yeah. being left-handed was a bad thing. Um, so to me, that was kind of a little subtle um nod to you know he's he's got some some challenges himself as a you know in this in this era kind of thing yeah are you right-handed or left-handed i am right-handed i was try one of my fourth grade teacher tried to change the way i write he didn't try to make me write with my right hand but he told me that the way i held my pencil i could not write that way and you know how a lot of left-handed people sort of write Curl. almost upside down? I don't write that way. I never have. So I don't know what yeah. his grievance was, but yeah. he spent so much time. And I was like, my penmanship is just fine. I was like one of the top yeah. kids in my class all through school. Like, why are you even wasting your time on this? Yeah, exactly. But but again, and that's to me, that's what the left-handedness um, kind of showed in, in the book mm -hmm. that, you know, so much energy is wasted on things that don't even really matter yeah. you know the character and his you know all the things that are good about him weigh so much more in his favor than the fact that he writes with one hand or the other yeah I and the agree. fact being left-handed as well fighting with swords you're at a disadvantage because you are you're leading with your left side so your heart is closer to mm -hmm. the um you know, the, the potential of, of the person you're fighting with. So that's why Ian, you know, always standing on his right hand was always such an important um, a role because, you know, he would, again, the importance of having somebody stand on, on your weaker side right. to, to support you. So, yeah. And, you know, oh, yeah. speaking of Ian, I think that they did a very good job with, obviously, the cgi or whatever work making him mm -hmm. be one-legged and then yeah like the curled in legs and all of those different things that they had to portray i think they did a really good job with all of those oh yeah those were amazingly well done so uh, yeah i was i was really because that's again it's like how are they going to portray column and how are they yeah. going to you know do all those things so is he going to be sitting there with blankets on all the time or you know whatever but and i think um, every yeah. time they have to have jamie in a shirtless scene that the makeup people are just like oh here we go again having yeah. to deal with yeah. that back <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and uh yeah that was that was really well done too like you know you could see the the pain that was inflicted for sure so yeah well i think this has been a good conversation <laughs> I don't think so too. I think if we don't stop soon, we're going to be going on till. So. <laughs> I know, I know. So you're going to know the answer to this faster than me. When is her next book coming out? It's soon ish, right? No, uh, 2020, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, because she, she obviously I follow along on everything. And so she has like daily lines every once in a while. She'll, she'll post little excerpts. And uh, then the hashtag is always, no, it's not done yet. I'll let you know when, <laughs> you know, be, probably when I'm finished it, it's, you know, it, but it, it, it's, it's worth waiting for because the, you know, the research that she does when she was here in Moncton, she had gone to PEI because some of the Mackenzie's from Leoc mm -hmm. had um, emigrated to Prince Edward Island after the rising. Right. So she went there to get information and, you know, so, um the, to, to me to be yeah so she's that's why i say she spoiled me really she has really spoiled me from any other fiction writer because <laughs> i just i adore how the the stories are just so interwoven and the great thing is any book you could pick up any book and read it and not have read any of the others and it'll make perfect sense yeah um, but when you do read them start to finish you see the little clips that she you know inserts from um like i think it was book four 
maybe book five. Anyway, one of the books um, she wrote while they were doing, I think, season one. Mm -hmm. So two of the characters are named, um, you know, like the the blacksmith is named Hugh and and, and uh, somebody else is named Claire or whatever or um, Katrina. And I um, was like, oh, see, you got that because you know you're you're putting you're inserting these names. Right. In. You know they're in the series now, um, so so those are great, great little clips, little Easter eggs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, back and back, and yeah. And on that same note, getting to see her as an extra in the show was fun too. Yes, yes, and and the way Mrs. Fitz was just like, oh, it's herself, and oh, you know, that dress looked lovely, you know, when you wore it last year too, and yeah. like these. So I was like, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. And it's something that you would only know if you were a reader of the series. Yeah, you probably exactly. wouldn't know who she was otherwise. No. Well, I am going to let you go. This was a wonderful, wonderful chat. And we'll have to come back after the new book comes out and we've had a chance oh. to dissect it a bit. Yes, love to. <laughs> Do you want to I remind us where we can find you, Michelle? You can find me at uh, www.thiswholelife.ca and also on Facebook and Instagram as This Whole Life Zero One. Wonderful! Thank you so much. Well, thank you. It's been it's been a pleasure. I don't get a chance to talk books with people um, a lot, and uh, so anytime. I hope you enjoyed this month's episode of Book Chat. Just to remind you, Book Chat comes out on the last Monday of each month. It is a once a month special episode of the Wellness Simplified podcast where I talk about all things books. And it was really a delight to talk to Michelle about all things Outlander during this season or this year's Droughtlander. So if you would like to talk Outlander with me or Michelle, you can find us on social media. Our links are in the description. As well, you can use the hashtag Wellness Simplified Podcast so that we can all jump in on the conversation and find out what you're thinking about the TV show, the books, which was your favorite book, which was your least favorite book, and all that good stuff. I will talk to you again on Friday.